chapter 3, verse 11, John says, I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. I want to pause for just a second. I want to make sure we're all on the same page. John is baptizing people with water unto what? Repentance. What's that mean? That means metanoia, change your mind. John is baptizing people into a religion of changing your mind about God, into a religion of trying to turn the direction of your life. Right? It's a baptism into change. Nothing wrong with change, but it's a baptism in which you do everything you promise you're going to do. The reformations are your reformations. They're your repentance. John's baptizing them. But he says there's com coming another one. Let me ask you this. Who do you think he's talking about when he says there's one coming who's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire? It's okay to say it. Who, who, who's he talking about? Okay, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. And I'm not being condescending. I, I really want, sometimes I think if we verbalize it, we can walk into a truth we've walked past. All right? So that's what I wanted to try to do today. I don't want to walk past it. I want to walk into it. So we walk into it together. So John's talking about Jesus coming to do what? Baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Then listen to 12. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He'll thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn and he'll burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Now, when John describes the one coming whom you and I both admit is Jesus... Here's what Jesus is supposed to do. He has some sort of fan in his hand and he cleanses out his threshing floor and gathers his wheat in the barn. You don't believe the Bible literally as much as you think you do. A lot of people will tell me, I think the Bible is literally true. And I'll go, which parts of it are literal? Because yes, I believe there was a man named Jesus who died on a literal cross and rose from a literal grave. But if you mean you tell me you think every single thing in there is literal, I don't think even you believe that. Because I haven't yet seen you be so personally offended by some of your actions that you cut your own hand off and pluck your own eyeball out. Because you're hoping Jesus wasn't literally meaning cut hands off and pluck out eyeballs. And in this case, you don't believe literalism because you don't ever see Jesus walk around with a big fan in his hand, blowing it all over people and separating wheat and chaff into his barn, burning stuff up in a big old furnace. You don't see it then, you don't see it now, and you don't expect to see it in the future. Like someday, Jesus is going to come back with a big fan and start blowing it on top of people. We don't see this as literal because we shouldn't see this in the literal sense of with our eyeballs. We see this with our spirit eyes that John goes, there's one coming after me. He's going to do a greater baptism. He's literally going to blow over something. That's what you do when you put oxygen onto a flame so that the flame burns hotter. But he's not just indiscriminately burning stuff up. He's actually got a purpose in that he separates his wheat from his chaff, and I want to make sure we understand that wheat and chaff come from the same stalk. I think the last time we were here, we preached a parable of the wheat and the tares. Those are two different things. But the wheat and the chaff, the chaff is the husk that comes off the wheat. It was part of the wheat. And the separation, the wheat weighs more than the chaff. And so when you blow the fan over the chaff, the wheat, everything that isn't wheat jumps up into the wind and blows out of the room. And then you burn up everything that you sweep off that's not wheat. And John goes, when he comes to baptize you, this is what it's going to look like. He's going to blow a fan over your heart and separate the chaff, which is the stuff you don't need, from the wheat, which is the stuff you do need. And he's going to gather what he needs of you into his barn, into himself. What a prophecy. Yeah, yeah. Now, Jesus said in Acts chapter 1, verse 5, John indeed baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from hence. Which tells me, when did Mark, Matthew chapter 3, verse 12 happen? When does Jesus put the winnowing fan in his hand and purge his floor? According to Acts 1, 5, Jesus said, it's not many days from now. And what happened not many days from now? Ten days after the ascension, what happened? Pentecost. So Jesus, in Acts 1, believed that Pentecost was the fulfillment of Matthew 3.12. That Jesus at Pentecost starts blowing the fan over the audience, over us, over someone, everyone in that upper room, 
And as he blows that over, everything that doesn't need to be there goes and burns and everything that needs to be there is left and he grabs it and he puts it into his own barn. 